listen, if you like guys that'll call their entourage to come and get <laughs> shuttle Miami you, Miami is the, is place, the place for place you. To no be. question. Oh, can you sign on to Raya in Miami? Um, well, Raya is global. Like I'm matching with guys in Sweden, so it doesn't even <laughs> know where you are. It just like you can be. It just sends you guys from all over the world because there's so few and it's so selective. You know what's interesting about Miami is it's it's. You know how in Hollywood success is the ultimate mark, you know? Yeah. In Miami, it's physical beauty. That's their that's, that's what, what they're I'm not into. Looking forward to. They're like hot everyone's buns. so hot. But not even like hot actually you'll love it because it's like hot in a like thick meat way. Like like it's not hot like I do would Do you like oiled muscles? Yeah. Everybody's like <laughs> no. hot, like perfectly ab okay, and I do like, like that. you know, like thick boy. But I'm not, and that's why I don't like that. I don't wanna be I don't, I can't. Oh, you think that likes each other? Oh, yeah. You want to look over and have somebody go, you know what? I don't usually get with girls like you, but you're different. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know Lisa Traeger? Yes. She has a new joke about how um, she predicts that piss play is going to be the next, like, forefront of, like, that's the Human that's going to be the next, like, normal thing. Eating ass was last year right. where, like, everyone's eating ass now when that used to be so taboo. I'm an eating ass uh, ori- pioneer. That's Moshe Kasher, everyone. Yeah. Eating ass pioneer. Since the 90s, folks. <laughs> <laughs> has, has anyone at this table been pissed on? Uh, I've done the other way around. You pissed on someone. Yeah, one time. Yeah. I, I think I have too. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Natasha Legero and Moshe Kasher, married couple, new <laughs> co hosts of the podcast, Endless Honeymoon Podcast. And piss freaks. And piss up. freaks. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you've, you've pissed on someone, Natasha? Yes. Yes. And I think maybe let him piss on me, but I did not like that. That's not. That's a. That's a lie. (laughs) It was in the (laughs) shower. Well, okay. I think it's possible. I might have a memory of him. Shower. It's more like a prank. Like no, but it it was like let's do this. Oh, let's let's do it in the shower in case we hate it. No, a prank (laughs) would be a a prank would be in bed and I was sleeping. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's more of a prank. So did someone want you to piss on them? Well, I had a a a person where we were kind of into freaky stuff and Mm -hmm. we like decided to try that and it was pretty hardcore i mean it wasn't just like it there wasn't was just like a spray too. it was also it, oh. was, it was like a it was a, more of a gulp and uh <laughs> Wait, were their mouths involved yeah, well, I mean, yeah oh hers. my god oh yeah. you peed in her mouth yeah wow we're learning so much about each other and you guys are <laughs> what does this do for you as as his wife you don't care oh, about his past she's horny as hell right now <laughs> <laughs> my little brother peed in my mouth when I was little. Oof. Oh. I was like, I'm going to tell Ma. And then I just felt like this whiz of piss in oh, my mouth. No. So. Oh, that is so weird, actually, because the person I'm talking about is your little brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying I find the, I find it all kind of gross. Yeah, no, it yeah. was gross. It was, it, it was interesting because I've done a lot of strange sexual things, and that was one where both the person I was with and me, we both looked at each other at the end and were like, uh, yeah, I don't think. Yeah, that was a little that too much. Good. Yeah, that, I'm, yeah, I'm see, not going to try that. We yeah. don't need to do that. Anymore. I yeah. found it strangely intimate. Oh, did you? With your brother? No. The shower <laughs> incident. The shower incident. You found it romantic? No, not romantic, just intimate. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, you're so close to someone, you're like, I've pissed on you. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, that's like so female though. Like, oh, it brought us closer to oh, the yeah. I really <laughs> girls. We'll take I, anything we can get. I really like him. I think he's special. I think he likes me too. I can still taste Maybe him. Maybe he's the one. Oh my god. I um I squirted for the first time like a lot last weekend. Oh like, yeah, a yeah. A lot, a lot, a lot. No, I saw the Wait, the, you said the squirted? Live feed. Yeah. And I thought it was pee. I was like, it was so much that I was like, this has got to be pee. We, and so I instantly like scooped it up to be like, like to smell it, to be like, is it, is it? And it was not. And it didn't. And my pee is always yellow because I take so many vitamins and it was not yellow. I would love to have been in that man's brain. He's just like, I was oh my myself. God. She, oh, 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 I see. It's I was going to say, funny, when in the duration a, does it happen during sex? You're saying that just happens. I, it, I didn't plan for it. I didn't. Usually I've like tried to like ex-boyfriends and I have been like, let's try to do this. And it just like can't let's get there. Let's try to make you squirt. Yeah. It's I cool. had this image in my mind, though, of you like with a partner and then you squirt and he's like, oh, my God, that's so hot. And you're like, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Is it pee? Is it pee? I needed to know. <laughs> you know, there's a big. It felt like it. There's a big scientific debate about right. whether or not it is pee. And a lot of I, I think that it's actually kind of unclear the science is unclear that it, it might be pee it, I, it definitely is 
what P becomes. Like it's a pro- <laughs> it's it's in the process of P, but it, it was not yellow and it did not. You smell mean like it's urine. under the umbrella of P? Yeah, it's like what P will like P becomes. It is before P. It, it P didn't get be. processed. Wait, hold it, on. What P will this be. is like a Christmas story. It's beautiful. <laughs> is <laughs> is, is it connected? <laughs> is it connected to orgasm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. And I oh, so you're saying you were masturbating and that happened? Yes. Okay. So what happened was, and I, like I said, I've made an effort to squirt before because I'm like, I just want to be able to say I've done it. And I thought I've done it before, but I really think I may have just like peed in those moments. Or sometimes you just like. Oh, so you really made an effort. You were just like, oh, it I, worked. Well, because all of the instructions to squirt say you're going to feel like you have to pee and uh, then just let it go. Uh-huh. And I'm like. Wait, you, you mean can, like, like train? Peeing? Pee. Pee. It's like Go what pee I pee. do on the toilet. I feel like I have to pee and then I let it go. You can train yourself to do this? I did. Yes, Ask dude. Nikki. So are you sure you just aren't you're just kind of like Everyone can do it, Natasha. No Every, way. Yes, we can all you can do anything. You just want to feel like a man and spray your load all over I mean, someone. kind of. It is super like it, I felt more empowered than I've ever felt <laughs> sexually That's after interesting. it. That was seriously what happened was um I just I did I had a sesh and it was fine. And I had a couple orgasms that were good. But I was just like, I had time to kill. And I was like, I'll just go for one more. And there was like this new series on kink.com, which I pay for, that like hey, I was really into. Oh, you pay for porn? Yeah. That's the most shocking thing I've heard this morning. Really? Yeah, that's way, that's way freakier than I pissed <laughs> also, in someone's mouth. Also, <laughs> she said series. I know, I know. <laughs> there's a, what, there's a series? series. What is it? It's called School of Submission. Okay, sure. And um, this girl is just go <laughs> Natasha, this girl named Kristen Scott, she's amazing. She goes to this school to like learn how to be a good whore. And um and she this the there was episode three and four dropped on this Saturday in Vegas and I was like oh my god and I've been waiting ser- episode one and two were like my favorite things that I've ever found and then I've been waiting for th- for three and then three and four dropped on the same day and so I was like oh my gosh I'm so excited how long is each episode they're like an hour but I an jump hour. around you oh I don't watch no 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 Th- but I just skip to the parts I like. So it takes me about 10 minutes. Wait, do you want to know a cri- uh, not to interrupt your story, no, but this is as an please. aside. How I used to this is how I used to watch porn when I first hit puberty. I would rent this was before the internet was yeah. really really kicking and I would rent um porn videos from the video store on my street. They would rent them to me for some reason. But we were pretty broke and we had this old VCR so and uh it didn't have a uh remote. And so I would watch porn with a broom. <laughs> Fast forwarding to the parts I liked with like, by pushing the broom on the fast forward button on the VCR. I'd, I'd be on the bed and I'd be poking the fast forward button with the broom. I watched mine with a mop. <laughs> oh, you need yeah, to. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> There's just something about this series that really gets me, and um, and so I went back in, and then I, it just started happening, and it was so much. I couldn't believe it. It was just, it like ran down the bed into my back. I had to change wow. my shirt afterwards. It was a huge, I was like so excited. But you, it sounds like it's random. It wasn't like you purposely no, did something. I didn't purposely do it. It was just, I think what it has to be is like your third or fourth orgasm. Like you have to like oh. push through to a point where it's like your your body like can't hold pee back anymore. So, uh, some people just do it. That's their oh, natural, their, their go-to. I know. It's their it's, first, their first squirt. Awful to do oh, that every time. time? Yeah, Actually, well. maybe it's a porn search uh, word. Oh, it is. It's not oh, maybe. People love it's 100%. Squirting. Oh, people love squirting. Oh, yeah. Definitely. That's I like it in porn because I know she's having a real orgasm. Right. But, you know, That's sometimes a- they like probably do a syringe and just have her squirt out some water or something. But I think most of the time, if she's squirting, that's like a sign that it's real. I have solid squirts. You know what right. that is? Mm-mm. That's where it's male squirting. So it's just at the height of orgasm, I just shit all over the bed, and it's, <laughs> that's how you know it's real. Thankfully, our nanny cleans it up. <laughs> I call her immediately. It's like your producer. I text the nanny. <laughs> nanny, like, but you're scooping it up. Like, is Thank it? You. Is, is it, it really? <laughs> oh, it is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to have Moshe Kasher and Natasha Legero here because I told them yesterday um, I went on a date last night and you guys have a new podcast out where you give relationship advice. Is- we are experts, so tell us about your date. Okay, oh, yeah. so, uh, oh God, okay, so. How does I'm- somebody get a date with you? Yeah. Raya. <laughs> oh, Raya, okay, sure. 
Um, any, I mean, calling it a date is... Um, and by the way, let me just say, I would not be talking about this date if anyone is interested in dating me and they're like, wow, she's going to trash me the next day on radio. I, w- I would not have even mentioned this date except that it was just great. I would have given no details had this been someone I would want to see in the future. Okay. I have boundaries. <laughs> oh, so you're saying if someone's out there listening right now and it's like, I don't want to ask her out because she might talk about me. Yeah. And the thing, don't worry. As long as I want to date you again, I won't trash you. As long as you, yes. If you and step up to the plate and you do it right. Well, even if I, do, if I don't want to date you and you're just a nice guy, but I'm just like, nah, then I won't trash you either. If you're, But if you do something like this guy did... You're gonna get trashed. <laughs> You're gonna get trashed. Did he know you were a comedian? Yes, but like, did I know that he knew that? No, because he didn't ask me anything about my. You know, like I look back on it, I'm like, it You're wasn't on. Great. You're on. You up with Nikki Glazer. Here's a segment we like to call. You're gonna get trashed. <laughs> <laughs> that should be a segment on the show. Was he wearing a fedora and carrying a surfboard in his picture? Because every boy on Raya seems to be doing that. Yeah. How do you know? Because I look at it with Why? my friends. Oh, yeah. with your friends? Yeah. yeah. Oh. I call Raya DJs jumping off of yachts. <laughs> <laughs> and they, sometimes they, they're they photographers and they'll have like Bella Hadid on their shoulders because they did one <laughs> shoot with her and they're like, we got to get this. And I'm like, I'm not ever going to go out with you. There's no way more than one person had Bella Hadid on their shoulders. There's always some supermodel that they've posed with at a photo shoot just to be like, I'm friends with her. So I decided to um, change my age range on these apps. I go, I, you know what? I've always said my age and, and higher because... Because I'm like, anyone, any guy younger than me is going to be so much more immature because men mature slower than us. And I just was like, I never even considered of dating someone even a couple years younger than me. But then I've been like meeting younger guys and I'm like, oh, they're all like really respectful and sweet. And why can't I pull a Kate Beckinsale and go and dip a little bit lower? So I changed my age range to 25. Oh, my God. Dude, I know. Um, the matches. What you were looking for, you're saying? Yeah. You're, okay, no, no, it. sorry. I didn't change my age right. to 25. You said you're down for yes. 25 up I'm to I'm 35, whatever. very clear on the app, says right. my age. Went to, from 25 to, I think, 47 or something. <laughs> That's a pretty That's a, large It's a big story. spread. You could it have really such is. different dates each totally. night. Dude, and I'm not attracted to anyone that's, like, up in their, like, higher 40s. Oh, so that. you're actually more attracted to 25-year-olds oh, than, to, t- than to 47-year-olds. I mean, yeah, I, oh, because th- they just... It's, it's atypical for a student at the School of Submission. I just will put that out there. <laughs> I know, yeah, I know, t- generally... You, you might tend to want a more salt and pepper daddy, but yeah. <laughs> so, 25. That's not 25. so bad. No, not, not so bad. bad. I'm willing to go younger, but, you know... Would you I'll, fuck me... an 18-year-old? Um. Yeah, I mean, it's legal. See, unlike you, I don't think I could have sex with an 18-year-old or a tw- maybe a 25-year-old if he was really smart and creative. I mean, I'm not what's having youngest... sex with anyone. I, I haven't youngest... had sex in, with someone... I've only been sleeping with the same person for seven years. Oh, really? One person. Oh, wow. So I talk a big game, but I am i don't get around. I guess he Googled me or saw on Twitter. He's like, you're in L.A.? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm here till Tuesday. And this is Sunday. And he goes, want to hang out tomorrow? And I was like, sure. And he lives right next to the hotel I'm staying at. And I, uh, I had a long day yesterday. I was done at 5. He was like, I have a thing at 9, so let's hang out early. So I get done with at my thing at 5. I go back to, I text him after I'm done with my meeting. He's like, um, c- uh, t- let me know when you get back to your hotel and, and uh, let's hang out. And so I let him know and I'm like, should I just walk over? Because he literally lives a block away from my hotel. And he goes, no, it's like a steep hill. I'll call you an Uber. And I'm like, hello. Yeah, like, you like that, <laughs> gentleman. I loved it. It didn't even occur to me that anyone would ever do that for I me. I never would. <laughs> and not for you. I just, <laughs> in general, like, I would never think to yeah. do that. So I was like swoon. Like that this is already off to a good start. So he calls me an Uber. I get in it. We go up the hill and um I walk in and um he answers the door. There's no hug. It's a little awkward. He seems very nervous, uh, which calms me down. Is, oh, are we is, have a plan to smoke weed. I haven't I smoked see. weed in a week. And- oh, so you guys this is a booty call. Well, it's at like 6.30, though. Do, oh, do you think so? 100%. Really? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> well, I mean, if you don't, if it's not a booty call, you say, let's go get dinner or get a cup of coffee. It's, it, if it's, well, he wanted it's, to get a drink, and I go, I don't drink, but I'll go get a drink with it's you. The I, one with I the prefer big... to smoke weed, and he was like, I love smoking weed. Do you want to come over and smoke weed? And I was like, booty yes. Booty call, 100%. Really? I guarantee, yes. Mm. So now you feel bad? I mean, uh oh, did I ruin the story? Keep talking. I'm still a fun hang. You should still want to date me. Well, okay. he, he heard that you were 
the squirt queen of northern nevada I and mean, so I'm he sure had heard he the saw tale. any of my material he was like yeah this literally the is. material from the <laughs> hotel you were staying at <laughs> if he saw the picture i took and posted <laughs> well you're hanging it from a clothesline right <laughs> she ready <So> <laughs> <laughs> she post ready she was ready she done <laughs> she done um so i get in there we is it like a nice house is it is he like yeah it's it's a really nice house he owns it he's, he's like an actor He's a producer. He looks like a beefcake. He is a beefcake. I'll give you that. Yeah. What does he produce? Oh, I guess you can't say. Movies. Sure. He's a movie producer? He's successful. Okay. He's very successful. I mean, this picture, he does look like like a young Zac Efron. He looks like a Disney star. Like sure, in that, he does. He's had sure. a step and repeat at like a Disney event. He's um, beefy. Yes. I walk in, I'm like, how long have you lived here? He's like, I bought it four years ago. I'm like, you own this place? Really nice place in the hills. And it's like stark. I mean, it looks like, and I go, why does it look... Like, no one lives here. And he's like, oh, you know, I'm showing it. I think uh, I'm, someone might buy it, whatever. And he was like, and I cleaned up for you, and I think I went a little bit overboard. Like, he hid too many, like, things. So it just looked like a serial killer kind <laughs> right. of situation. It's, there's plastic sheet hanging from the <laughs> yeah, wall. Yeah, I mean, pr- there was nothing about it that looked like anyone lived there. He um, he had ordered weed in, in, like, this big case. Like, he had gotten way too much in, like, a... Um, you know, he had the seamless of weed show up, and he sure. got. He was like, "I don't know what you wanted, so I just got a bunch." And I was like, "Oh, I need like one hit of something, and I'll be good to go." But this is nice of you to do all of this. So then we go outside to his um, patio, or to his like pool area, and we, I have like one hit. He smokes five joints. <laughs> I'm not joking, you guys. Wait, five, five whole joints. Five. And I go, I can't believe how much you're smoking. He's like, I just don't, I don't get high. I don't have it. Like, it doesn't affect me. I don't know what it is. It it really sucks. Like, I have to, and it was almost endearing. He was just like, I just don't, like, ever feel high. And I was like, that's crazy. And he pulls out his heroin. I know. He, I was so, I was feeling good, but I, I, I was glad I didn't have more than one hit because I would have been way too high. But I was... Maybe talking a little bit too much, but I was being funny and charming. I was trying my best, but I it, I kept vacillating between is this a friend thing or am I even attracted to him? Is it a friend thing? Like, was I like, is this guy going to be a friend to me? Like, or are they I, chums do I wanna smoking have pot together? A hundred percent. It's not a friend thing. Well, I'm deciding if that oh, is. Oh, if you like, want to put I him, wanna decide. Have sex well, you with have no enough. decision in this matter, <laughs> Thank Nikki. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to get pissed on and uh, yeah, I'll just have to take it. So- I, you know when you're is like, he acting different from five joints? No, not at all. He can totally. Is he drinking it. with it too? No, nope, no. Nope. We're just sitting. It's this is five o'clock. It's light outside. We're just sitting on two, um, you know, lounge chairs by the pool, talking. I'm learning a lot about his career, which is really fascinating. Like he is very successful. There's a lot of interesting things going on in his life. He's not asking me anything about mine, which I'm just like, whatever. I'll get to it later. And he probably knows more than he's letting on, so he's trying to play it cool. And then, and we're having a good conversation. Then um, it comes up that I'm vegan, and he seems a little annoyed by that, which I've <laughs> butted up against with sure. guys. Uh huh. And I was just like, "You're so mellow about it, though." <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I know. It's my, it really does turn guys off, but I I can't help it. And he's like, "Why are you vegan?" I'm like, "I don't know. I just love animals, and I like can't eat them. I literally can't. I wish I could. Meat is delicious. It sucks." And he's like, "He's." Oh, I'm I'm moving in New York to a neighborhood he used to live in. And at this point, this is when I think I he went from thinking he liking me to like after the vegan talk, he just hated me. He just like one he I think he realized I'm not gonna fuck her or something. He could something smell happened. that you weren't gonna fuck him, you mean. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well it gets something weird. Shifted. Got it. Things take a turn. Great. So <laughs> we're we have the vegan talk. And he goes, I go, I was, I asked him about my neighborhood that I'm about to move into. He used to live there. And I go, tell me about it because I've only lived in Chelsea. I'm about to move to Soho. What was it like when you lived there? And he's like, I don't even know what to tell you. Like, he didn't even want to answer me. I was trying to like engage him and he was like kind of sure. done. And he goes, I'm sure there's lots of vegan restaurants in Oof, that area. I don't like him. And he goes, uh, he goes, you guys are kind of taken over. And I go, oh, are you threatened? Like I said it in like a flirty way of like, oh, you, you thre- guys have taken you guys. Over. And I'm just like, these guys with their fucking meat is so annoying to me. If if you're threatened by the fact, I don't care if you eat meat, but some of these guys get like really mad about sure. it and they shift like on a dime. And it's just, 
I don't I don't care if you eat meat, but it, he took it personally. You guys are just oh these yeah you it's guys like are kind of taking it's over. It's like a racist. It's very funny. It's like fucking these vegans. They're moving into Soho. It's not the neighborhood it was. <laughs> You know, it used to be all, you know. A fogo de chow on every corner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know that restaurant where you can, like, put your meat? You put, like, a little paddle up when you want more meat? Yes. Yes. I had a guy take me there once. He thought it was so cool. I was like, this is the most low class. If your identity is eating meat. Disgusting. It's so, un- it's. More meat. It's green. I want more meat. Oh, it's so gross. So he says you guys are taking over the neighborhood. <laughs> And let me just give him a little bit of credit. He is so cute. He is um, successful. He is making me laugh. He's saying funny things. I, I told him a story about how I thought I was going to get murdered at one point because I go, I could have come over here and you could murder me right now. Like, this is actually kind of a murdery situation. And we're, like, having flirty fun. Sure. I'm like, I, I keep going between I'm going to marry this guy and I could totally see us together forever, which is an insane thought to even have on a first date. But, you know, you go all the places. Sure. To, like... No, this guy is just my friend. I'm like grossed out. Like, it, it, and and as I'm realizing this, as I'm vacillating between those two extremes, I realize he's probably doing the same thing with me. We're all the same. Like, right. He's probably going like, oh, I hate when she did that. Oh wow, I really like. Like, it was just all over the map. He's probably not entertaining the illusion that he's going to befriend you, though. Really? Yeah, I don't. I think it's funny that you went but on a riot date. Famous, I'm famous. You know, no, I think fish. it's funny that you went on a riot date and were like, maybe this guy will be a good buddy for me to hang with for the next decade. But well, doesn't it matter what the lead up was too? Like, if it was really sexual in the texting chain, there was no sexual. It was. It there was no flirtation in the texts. So that kind of you know. No, I'm just saying. Like, do you need friends? No. Like, no, you have plenty of friends, right? Like, so the, the idea that you're like, oh, maybe I'll be this guy's good old chum. What you're really thinking is like, maybe I'm not going to fuck this guy and get the hell Instagram out of here. Instagram friends. Okay, sure, sure. Where we like each other's stuff. Maybe I'll see him at a party. Totally. Industry friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because gotcha. he's, 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 does some cool shit. I do some cool shit. We might know each other that way. So then all of a sudden, so I'm probably there for 40 minutes at this point. And we're having, like, good flowing conversations, not awkward. I'm kind of thinking, like, when am I going to go? What's going to happen? Then all of a sudden, I'm I'm so embarrassed to even say this. I'm excited. He gets a text, and he's like, oh, no. Oh, no. (laughs) And, And I'm like, what? And he's like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay, um... Oh God! Okay, I gotta, I gotta take, I gotta call this. I gotta take this call, and he takes a call in front of me that is a work emergency. There's a press release that went out, and the writers are very upset about it because it wasn't supposed to be announced. And he's on the phone. He's like, "Well," the, and it seems very convincing. This checks out to me. As I'm in the moment, I'm like, "This is a legit work emergency. There's nothing fishy about this. It seems like this is a thing." But he's on the phone in front of me, right next to me on the, the, the lounge chair. He doesn't go out of the room to take the call. It's going on for about five minutes. And I'm, I text my friend. At that point, I get up and I go, I'm going to get into my phone then if we're going to do this. He's like, I'm, I'm sorry, this sucks. He apologizes maybe once a little bit, but not enough for me. Like, I need more of an apology sure. that you just answered a phone in front of me and, and are just sitting there. Can, wait, he saw the number and said, oh, no, or he he's got a He's getting text. a text. Okay, oh, gotcha. no. Then he calls, and he's like, dude. And blah, blah, he's talking. And I'm just sitting there. I go to get my phone because I'm just sitting there like an idiot. I'm and Instantly, I text my friends. I'm like, how long do you let a guy have a phone call in front of you about a work <laughs> emergency before you just go, I'm going to go? Sure. And my friends are like, is it happening right now? In the time that I'm texting them, all of a sudden, people start coming into the house. There's like three <laughs> guys that show up. And they um, music starts playing. Like they, they walk into the house. And at this point, I walk in to grab my phone. And all these guys walk in as I'm grabbing my phone. None of them say hello to me. None of them make eye contact with me. They are, it, I'm, we're in the kitchen together. They, they just go, oh, they look at me once and then no introduction, nothing. They're used to seeing girls in his kitchen. I guess. <laughs> um, it was it was so I felt like a ghost. I was like, I don't know how do I not exist? This is so weird. They're they're all on the phone, they're talking. The, one of them go then I go at my phone, I go back outside. One of the roommates comes out and starts talking to the guy on the phone. And this work emergency sometimes uh, apparently isn't so much of an emergency because they're talking about dinner. All of a sudden, he's on the phone. He's like, Fugo yeah, I told child. you I want to go to dinner later. <laughs> yeah. Fugo the child, baby. Soho. And his friend is talking to him. I'm sitting. The friend is facing me. 
The guy is turned around to talk to his friend. The roommate is facing me, won't look at me. I'm literally three feet from him, will not make eye contact with me. I'm trying to just be like, hi, I'm Nikki. The guy doesn't introduce me to the roommate. Granted, he's on the phone, so maybe he's juggling a little bit with the conversation. Doesn't introduce me. Then another guy comes out and is FaceTiming with his girlfriend around the pool, speaking Spanish to his girlfriend, like, I love you, I love you, it's so good to see you. Walking around the pool right next to me, doesn't acknowledge that I'm there. The guy's on the phone, the roommate's talking to the guy, the sub guy's walking around. Then another guy comes in and goes up to his room, which I can hear, and starts blaring Maroon 5. <laughs> <laughs> blaring it. So he kind of was giving you the illusion that he lived in this place by himself? No, he told me he had a roommate. He has a roommate that's um, another guy that is one of his best friends, and they both started a production company together, and they're really... They're fucking success. Like these okay. two guys just like sure. partnered up and big things are happening and sure. I believe all of it and it, it all checks out. So one of these guys is that guy. He's up there blaring Maroon 5. Like why would you, if your friend was on a date or something, would go up to your room and start blaring Maroon 5? Like it just, it was chaos and all of a sudden, I, and then he, the guy on the phone, my date, goes, I got to go in and talk to my roommate about this issue. It's a, it, this. The writers are really pissed about this thing. And I'm like, I don't care. So he leaves. This is a really good Maroon 5 song. We yeah. got to go rock out. <laughs> so, at the, so at this point, I've also gone inside because it's cold. And I've gotten a blanket. And I'm like, I'm just taking this blanket. Is this fine? So, so you're covered in a blanket right so now. So at this point, I think he sees the blanket. And he's like, oh, shit. She's not going. And that's when I my first indication, like, he wants me to leave. And this is... So from the five minutes he's on the phone in front of me by himself, the roommates all come home. It's probably three minutes later. He goes inside to the kitchen to talk to the roommate. I'm left outside with a blanket on my phone, <laughs> texting my friends. Is it one like, of those foil, like, immigration <laughs> blankets? <laughs> why didn't you leave? Yeah, why didn't you leave? Because the first opportunity I had, I did. Okay. I mean, this we're talking like this all happened within right. six minutes of him being on the phone. I then get up. And I follow him into the kitchen. He's just walked into the kitchen to go talk to his roommate. And I go in and I go, hey, I'm going to go. And he goes, okay. Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh. Okay. And then it was just silent. And I'm like, when is he going to apologize for this chaos? And he doesn't. And so I I'm thinking he's going to say I'm sorry. And so what do I say? I go, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know when you're just like <laughs> filling the space with no. whatever? This is such a woman thing. Oh, you were the rudest person I've ever met in my life. This is I just all had your to say fault. Something. I, oh, my, my apologies. And I think Moshe, I was thinking like he's gonna say I'm sorry, so I said what right. I thought he was gonna say. You know, yeah, so I go, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, and he yeah. goes, I'm sorry, and I was like, Yeah. I go, Why did this turn into a fire festival meeting all of a sudden? <laughs> I was so proud of myself for that line. Yeah. He didn't laugh it's a because great it line. really he was. These laugh. guys were all coke addicts. Like <laughs> they all, they were all coked out. They did, none of them made eye contact with me. They're all on the phone doing deals. Like it was chaos. It went from nothing, from a connected conversation person. to total chaos with three guys coming in and none of them looking at me or saying hi to me. None of them. I it's mean, crazy. that's what you get with a twenty-five-year-old house full of twenty-five-year-olds. Thirty. Still, yeah. So, so he goes, okay. And I go, all right. And by the way, he had called me an Uber. I'm calling myself one home. There's no attempt to get me one home. I have a joke in my act about how, like, after you, like, if you don't make a guy come, like, th things change. Like, if you hook up with a guy and he doesn't get to come, like, he will have brought you there to, in an Uber black, but you're going home in a Lyft share. Uh -huh. And my joke <laughs> happened to me, except that I had to call my Uber back. So I'm on. So then he just walks me out. He doesn't laugh at my fire festival joke, and he and he goes, he goes, okay, well, um, he, what did how, say, when do though? you leave? And I was like, tomorrow. And he's like, okay, well, I'm coming to New York in a couple weeks, and um, I was like, okay, well, this was fun, and he was like, yeah, and then we hugged, and he's like, I'll hit you up when I go to New York, and I'm like, okay, and then I'm out, and the door shuts, and I'm, I just have a sense. That's when it dawns on me, that was a fake call. Oh, yeah. The chaos erupted out of nowhere. Get this girl out of here. Yeah, absolutely. And really? it, it was so humiliating that someone fucking tricked me or thought that they tricked me. I was enraged. Do you still have the blanket on, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> As you're waiting for the lift? I was proud I didn't put it back where it would be on. I left it by the floor. What are the good? Fuck it. He has go. to pick you up go, my girl. fucking blanket and fold it again. What are the clues that you think this is fake? I I'm with you. I thought it the was the second that the the second that the conversation may have dipped and there was a little bit less chemistry between us because of the vegan weird thing that I was being I was still trying to keep it flirty and fun. But there was just he the second you think he so like what do you think happened? He he like texted, texted his, his friends, friends send me an out. Get me an out and then he did the thing of oh no. 
oh no, like looking at his phone, just the fu- fake oh no's. And I go, what? And he's like, um, you know, struggling to come up with something. And then, so I'm like, oh my God, I just, someone had to rescue this guy from a date with me? I'm fucking <laughs> Nikki Glazer. Fuck you. I'm the most funny, interesting person you'll ever fucking meet, you piece of shit. And you're going to send me home because I won't, you get a sense I won't blow you today? That's what it was. I mean, fuck you. Yeah, he decided he did. I'm didn't. still a good hang. Sure. I, I, listen, I'm not on his side. I'm just trying to understand his brain. <sighs> Is he a good hang, though? Did you even want to hang with him? He was cute, and I was still deciding if I would have maybe, like, made out with him or done something. And when I get made out, I tend to, like, get convinced to, like, do things with guys that I don't want to do just by virtue of, like, their dick gets hard. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to make you mad at me. So he probably could have gotten something out of the deal. <laughs> I really, I, I like, it wasn't off the table. And I was, I'm trying to throw myself into more hookup scenarios to have more, like, experiences because I've just, I really haven't hooked up that much in my life. And I, I just want to live a little bit more. And, so uh, and he the- had all those guys come. Dude, it was so embarrassing. And Because I know the second the door shut, they all laughed about it. Sure. And like, were like, dude, thanks for like saving me, bro. Like, you would just tell that that was the vibe. They were all dancing to Maroon 5. <laughs> <laughs> She's gone. She's gone. Me, me, She's me, gone. Me, gone. 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 Dancing, like, you know what would have made it worse is if right as you were sitting there humiliated waiting for the lift if the like one of the guys had opened the door and just been like big fan by the way I it would have been it would have been validating I was like did did that, do any of them even care that I'm like who they didn't it was so weird that they didn't talk I to love me that you Moshe. start going through your credits in your brain you're like I'm in fucking I was on the- I, I mean I felt like I it, everything was taken from me in that moment. I felt so like who I, I don't know. I'm no one. I, I this guy treated me because he also started the date by telling me about a terrible date he had been on. He told me that this girl sat down at um, drinks and she was like, "Let's get some things out of the way." And she like had a bunch of red flags immediately. And she was like, "And I'm gonna order food. Is that okay?" And I was like, "That's." I go, did you buy her food? And he goes, oh, fuck no. As soon as she was, like, not someone I wanted to be with, I left. I faked a call, and I left immediately. So he told me that he did oh the fake God. call thing. That's crazy. Yeah, you got you got fake called. But, you know. How dare you? But, uh, well, here's the bright side. You know that scene in A Bronx Tale where the guy. No. You never saw A Bronx mm-hmm. Tale? It's a great movie. But anyway, there's a scene where there, uh, there's, like, a young mobster who wants to, like, who is trying to be tough and impress the local, like, mob boss. And there's a guy that owes him $15. And it's, like, a running theme where the guy will walk by and the young mobster is like, where's my $15? And he chase, he's chasing after the guy. And the the, the mob boss, Chaz Palmonteri, pulls him aside. He says, how much does that guy owe you? And he's like, 15 bucks. And he goes, well, you could go fuck him up. You could go beat his ass. Or you could never talk to him again. And it only costs you fifteen dollars to get that guy out of your life forever. Yeah. And the bright side of this—that's a very humiliating story. It's uh, but, so embarrassing. But the bright side is, it would have been a lot worse if you had fucked that guy. Yeah. Like, think about how much worse that would be yeah. if you had to have that guy in your memory banks. Because a guy like that, it's not like he's going to get cool once you fuck him. So it's like, You're thank right. God you didn't end up yeah. sleeping with a dude like some fucking gross dude like that. I who's made like, that mistake a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah. You, you got lucky, actually, yeah. I think. They show you who you are immediately. <clears throat> I think one of your problems, Nikki, because I know you kind of, you know, I know like mm-hmm. your taste is, I think you kind of like bros. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I like, and that's what you get. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I do. I mean, I've never dated one, so it's like this is kind of foreign to me. I, I, I've never been treated this way. I've never. That's no one's low. ever done the emergency call thing. But to that me. sounds it's like just, to get that as a girl, like you're like, who am I that? obnoxious like that happens to girls that are like hi and they're like so stupid and they're like that happens to dumb girls that doesn't happen to interesting smart women yeah I, but you know that's what also kind of what you get when you date when you date on raya because like you know it's the clearly that guy's dating tips come from watching entourage episodes i just think it's crazy that you are that you would take this as i was humiliated i just think i hear the story yeah. i'm like you were lucky you got so lucky to get out of there what if you had that guy for the rest of your life in your memory of i fucked that guy oh i was there was no chance i was going to fuck him but i would have liked to like i just wanted him to want to fuck me Moshe. is that uh, so hard uh, <laughs> no it's just this and guy I, sounds like that the worst. i felt rejected so then he he texted me yeah so what do you think about this? He texted me, so sorry about that before, with the bearing the teeth emoji. Sure. That's Is that it? just him being like, yeah, that's it. 
and I tried to. So c- sorry about before and then the- emoji. The Ooh, I'm emoji. so busy. Ooh. That was weird emoji. Ooh. Did you write him back? Okay, so what what happened was I was trying to copy his text so I could send to my friends <laughs> to be like he just texted me this instead of screenshotting and I just like copied it. So I pressed on the t- you know when you press on the text and I accidentally hearted, you hearted it. it. <laughs> oh, Nikki, no. Oh, Nikki, no. And that's it. That's it. Oh. And then nothing back. You should write him again and be Sorry, like Sorry, I didn't mean to heart that. Meant to thumbs down. Oh. Yeah, I should have. God damn it. I really lost Thumbs it. down would have been the move. I know it would have been so cool. I, I would have just left it nothing. Yeah, nothing would have been That would have been so cool, but I hearted it like it's okay. I'm totally fine with it. So if you're listening, I didn't mean to heart that. I'm not cool with it. I would have just left it on red and 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 never written back. That's he, how cool I would have been. He turned to the guys. He's like, "Turn up that maroon 5. She just hearted it." <laughs> I'm at a Deb, Deb. Dab, dab. Mentally, I can't come good unless I use my own hand. We all know can't that. Can't come good. Yeah. You know my that that's shirt. not. I can't come well. Good. You can't speak good. Either. No. You can't come good? No, I can't come good, meaning I can't come when I want to come. I can't come from sex, from penetration. I can only come when I use my own hand, a lot of times by myself. Uh-huh. I just, okay, so you can't come from sex. I it's not you come can't come sex. good. Yeah, I can't come good. It just sounds like when you do come, it's just like, when you when you do, mm-hmm. do when you do come, Yeah. not when you do come, <laughs> but like when you actually are able to come, it sounds when you say I don't, I can't come good, it sounds like it just like kind of spurts out in like a sad way. That's what to me meaning I can't come good. Whereas I think you just can't come. Good. Well, good. For her. Well, not for me. She could come. But this is the thing. So I talked about, like, so I can't come with my girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And it's not a great thing. Yeah. You want to be able to come Have with Have you ever, partner. ever been able to come? Yeah, that's the problem. So With her? In your whole how long yes, have you yes, been together? Yes, we've come, but not from penetration. Okay. Um... From blowjob? No. From oral sex? My own hand. Well, that's not coming together. Okay, so you've come in front of her. (laughs) Yeah. So you can come good in front of her. Uh, Decent. But you've never (laughs) been able to come from... What about her hand? Why don't you take her hand and your hand? Yeah, no, we've tried that. And no? Well, you can't... I don't really have a two-hand dick. What does that mean? Like, I got more of a one hand cut. No, okay. Well, I'm going to just mime this, but okay. like, it's not that. Okay, so. We're on my dick. <laughs> you, that doesn't need a two. It's not yeah. like you. That doesn't yeah. make sense. So, any, so I tell a story about um, on my podcast. I don't want her to listen to my podcast because mm-hmm. I say some like revealing stuff. Yeah. And I talk about. Like what? How I uh, had sex with a uh, prostitute. You've never, she's never heard that? In Vegas, no. And um, part of the story, so I'm telling, so I don't, so I tell her, it's probably better that you don't listen to the podcast. And she's like, well, what is it? Now she really, you know, you tell someone that, they're intrigued. And we're at dinner and I was like, look, I just, I go, fine, I'll tell you, I'll just be honest with you. I had sex with a prostitute in Vegas when I was like 23. Oh. And then, and then I go, and then uh, she's like, okay. I was like, well, you do want to know the details? Uh, So... I, I, she, we had sex and she, her friend was in my ear saying I can't fuck her good and then the next thing I know Wait, I. Wait, why? Well, the, the, the hooker's friend? There were two hookers. Okay. <laughs> and one of them, and one of them was. So two, one, I paid. You, I, I, you can't please her. Yeah, in my ear, shirtless. What? That's kind of hot. It was, it was the hottest thing on earth. To be like, you're a fucking chump. You're a fucking, you, you gonna fuck her? You gonna fuck I was like, yeah, I'm gonna fuck her. I'm gonna try. But I was at a strip club for a whole day, so I had so much right. stock left. And this is before Zoloft. So, so you had been at, previous to getting these two hookers, you had been in Vegas for, tw- you had spent 24 hours at a strip club. Yes. This stripper came up to me. She goes, this is, what are you doing here? And she goes, it's my second shift. So I was there for her. She went home, took care of her kids, came back, and I was still sitting there. And uh, so I didn't come for a week, even. 
And then you finally, last night in Vegas, decided to get two prostitutes. One, and she brought a friend. She, she brought a friend. Yeah, and then she goes, it's a thousand for each of us. So I gave the one a thousand, and the other one two hundred. And the, just the one you gave two hundred, she was just whispering in your ear that Shirtless. you Shirtless. Okay. And they were both tens. Okay. And the girl, right when she started blowing me, with a condom on, disclaimer, I felt like There's I could no come way. right There's away. No I swear to God, she was wearing a condom. She put it on with her mouth. I swear to God. Okay. okay. I swear. I, I actually believe you. And then she sat on my dick, and I swear to God, before she even got to the bottom of my dick, I came. Mm-hmm. Within seconds. I mean, and they it doesn't go, take... They go, did, did, did he come? That's what she said. And then her blonde friend who was like, you gonna fuck her? She's like, he came? And they're both talking over me like I'm not even there anymore about how pathetic I am. So, so I tell my girlfriend this story. <laughs> Over she, dinner. And she gets angry. And I go, I thought you weren't angry about the Wait, hooker. Why did, why she, did she goes, get angry? Because I came. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Thank you so much for watching that clip that you just watched. Did you enjoy it? I hope you did. If you did, thumbs up it. Why don't you subscribe? Why don't you just keep watching more videos? Let them play. Share with your friends. Go share on your Instagram story. Go, just have a great day.